The tail command can be used to print out the last few lines from a file or stream. Think of it as a command that shows you the tail end of a file. One of the most common use cases for the tail command is to monitor for any new lines that get written to the end of a log file. You can start monitoring a file for new lines with the dash F flag. To get back to the command prompt, press and hold the control key followed by the C key. Oh hi there! I'm glad that you could join me for an exciting Friday night. I'm using the tail command to monitor everything that happens on all of my computers. For example, on this computer, I'm using the tail command to monitor the SSH logs for all the login attempts that hackers are making to log into my SSH server. To monitor these log files, all I need to do is run the tail command with the dash F flag and then type the path of the log file. For example, the log file that contains information about SSH login attempts on my machine is located at var log auth.log. I just need to run this command to start seeing any new lines that get written to this file. By default, when you run the tail command with the dash F flag, it will show you the last 10 lines that were already in the file. I often find this confusing, since you don't always know when those lines were written to the file. Therefore, I like using the dash N flag with a value of zero. This flag specifies how many lines should be written out immediately after starting the tail command. As soon as any new lines are written to the file, they will be printed. On the bottom panel, I'm also monitoring all of the hacking attempts that hackers are making on my web server. To monitor the log file of my web server, I can use this command. Now, whenever someone does a request to this web server, I'll immediately see information about the request in the logs. Here you can see the information about the request that I just made. Here's another request done using curl instead. On this computer, I'm copying a large number of files, and I want to monitor the progress of the last four files that were copied into this directory. I can do this with a combination of the watch, ls, and tail commands. To build up this command, I can start with the plain old ls command. Just typing ls without any flags doesn't show much detail, so I like to use ls-latr. The L flag changes the formatting of how the files are listed. It also shows extra information, including who owns the file and various permissions. It also shows how large the file is in bytes. The A flag tells the ls command to print out all of the files, including hidden ones. Hidden files start with a period. These two files are special files that reference the current directory and the parent directory. The T flag tells the ls command to sort the files according to which one was last modified. And the R flag reverses the sort ordering. Putting these all together, we get ls-latr. This command is a quick way to find out what's going on with the most recently modified file in the current directory. Printing out all of the files could get very distracting if there are a lot of them. Therefore, we can pipe the output of this ls command into the tail command and specify that tail should only print the last four lines. This gives us the last four recently modified files in the current directory. It also shows us how large these files are but it would be tedious to manually run this command over and over again. Therefore, we can use another command called watch. This watch command will run the same command that we ran up here. It will run this command repeatedly at regular intervals. By default, watch will run our command every two seconds. We can specify a different interval to watch using the dash n flag. In this case, we're using 0.1 seconds.
The dash D flag tells the watch command to highlight the differences in the output whenever the output of our command changes. Let's run this command now. As you can see, the file copying has finished, so there are no longer any changes. On this screen, I'm using the tail command to monitor the syslog file, so I can monitor what cron jobs are running on my computer. If a hacker installs a malicious cron job on my computer, I might see signs of it in this log file. The syslog file contains logging statements for a number of different applications on your computer. In this file, you'll see logging statements from a number of different sources on your computer, including the kernel, smart monitoring tools, and cron. Let's install a cron job that will print out hello world on my computer every minute. We can monitor the syslog file using the tail command to see if it actually runs. There it is. And there it is again. And after another minute, here it is again, right on time. You can follow more than one file at once. For example, I can follow the access logs and the error logs of my web server at the same time using this command. You can also use wildcards in your shell, which will let you follow more than one file at once. Occasionally, you might want to use the tail command to monitor more than one file at once, when the files live in a directory that requires elevator privileges to see. You might try running a command like this, but this doesn't work. Instead, you can use this command because this does work. These single quotes prevent the wildcard from expanding before the entire command is sent to sudo. As we saw before, you can explicitly tell the tail command how many lines to show from the end of the file or stream. For example, in this file, we can show the last two lines like this. But there's a second and slightly different way to tell the tail command to print out the end of the file. You can add a plus sign before the number and then you'll get every line starting at that line number till the end of the file. For example, this command prints out every line of the file from the second line till the end. You can also tell the tail command to print out the last few bytes instead of the last few lines. For this, you can use the dash C flag. Here is a command that will print out the last byte in the file. Let's pipe this into XXD to see what the byte is. It's a new line. Let's print out the last four bytes in this file. In another video, we saw how you can use the sort command to sort the lines of text in a file. We use this example list of books as a demonstration. This use of the sort command shows us the list of books sorted from oldest to newest. If we want a command that will help us extract the three newest books from the file, we can take the output of this sort command and pipe it into the tail command. And here is the result. In a different video, we saw how you can use the unique command to find the unique set of lines in a file. We use this list of names as one of the demonstrations. If we want to print out whatever the most frequently used name in this file is, we can use the tail command, the unique command, and the sort command to help solve this problem. First, we can make sure the lines in this file are sorted. Then, we can pipe this into unique and count the lines. Then, we can sort the list of counts numerically. Since the counts are in ascending numerical order, we can simply pipe the output of this into tail 
and extract the last line. And here is the result.